Hey guys, good evening everyone and welcome back to my channel. This is Dr. Shubham and today in this particular session, I am going to talk about basically the abnormal variations in the placenta. But before going into the abnormal variations of the placenta, first of all, we need to know about the uh, normal placenta and uh, some of the basic about the placenta, what is placenta and uh, all of these things, right? So uh, today I just took uh, an important topic from the ops gynae side. So I thought to discuss it with you as well. So uh, variations of the placenta, we'll talk about that. It's very crucial for the exam and for the clinical point of view as well. So let's move into the section. Uh, this is the particular image uh, where we can uh, see that uh, very well we can actually uh, notice that this is the placenta basically, right? Yeah, so I'm just highlighting, yeah, this is the placenta, right? And uh, placenta plays a very crucial role in the connection between the mother and the fetus during the intrauterine life all of us know about that right so this is the placenta which actually uh, you know gives the nutrition to the baby which is actually responsible for the production of several hormones right which are uh, crucial for the mother and basically the fetus uh, mainly then you know with the placenta how it makes the connection with the baby so as you can see, I'm just uh, denoting it with the yellow color over here. So this particular structure, right? So this particular structure, which is coming out from the placenta, right? And going into the umbilicus of the baby or the fetus, basically, uh, that is the connection between the placenta and the baby, right? And this connection is actually denoted by the umbilical cord, which I have just shown you with the yellow color this yellow color structure is the umbilical cord right and it is actually entering the umbilicus of the fetus right as far as this placenta is concerned right as far as this placenta is concerned this placenta is concerned with the blue color i'm showing as far as this placenta is concerned what we know about it right this placenta has two sides basically okay one is the maternal side as you can see over here and another one is the fetal side which is the fetal surface right so while delivering the baby right if you have delivered the baby during your ops gynae uh, postings or uh, something like that or if you are working in a uh, gynae department or in the labor room so if you have delivered a baby right after the delivery of the baby the uh, during the steps of the labor we are seeing that third stage of the labor we are talking about the delivery of the placenta so uh, delivery after delivery of the baby we need to deliver the placenta as well right so when we will you know when we are delivering the placenta actually we are having in our hand let's say that we are having the placenta right what we can see is we can see this kind of picture in our hand right we can see this kind of picture in our hand where we can see the umbilical cord is coming out like this right umbilical cord is coming out like this right and what we'll do we'll put the clamp over the umbilical cord and we'll cut it right after some time right so what we do is what we can see over here is that we are having an amnion and the chorion right uh, this layer is the amnion basically as you can see this is the amnion and uh, another one towards the uh, maternal side you will be having the chorion okay so we are having amnion and the chorion then this umbilical cord is actually leaving out from the placenta from the center usually from the center usually right if it is inserting if you are seeing in the placenta that umbilical cord is inserted not centrally for example periphery or something like that i will talk about them that is not the normal location of the umbilical cord insertion into the placenta right so this particular thing which i have talked about just now i have talked about the normal normal things right normal normal things which we can see over here okay so now uh, let me just talk about uh, some other aspects right for an example uh, look over here so I told you placenta as you can see it is actually connecting the mother so it is having the maternal side this will be the maternal side right mother side and this will be the fetal side right this will be the fetal side okay once you are clear with that moving on to the next uh, particular uh, slide over here so some more things so as I have talked about that the placenta is having the maternal side you can see these are the cotyledons right several cotyledons you can see over there right cotyledons so what is the clinical significance of knowing this uh, that the several cotyledons are uh, there 
in the maternal side of the placenta because let's say that you are actually delivering the baby after delivery of the after successful delivery of the baby you are leaving the placenta now and uh, you know just god forbid for example the you were delivering the placenta and the whole placenta couldn't be delivered right and let's say some of the part of the placenta remained inside the uterus right what i'm saying is that you were delivering the fetus right obviously this whole fetus right right successfully you delivered the baby you delivered the fetus you delivered the baby and now you have to deliver this placenta also while delivering the placenta some of the part of the placenta some of the part of the placenta just left behind in the uterus right and rest of the placenta you delivered it so some of the part of the placenta as you can see this will be the maternal side or fetal side yes so this will, this will be the mother side of the placenta or the maternal side of the placenta so these cotyledons these cotyledons might left behind sometimes while delivering the placenta during the third stage of labor stages of labor i will make a separate video on that okay there i will be talking about the details of the steps of the labor or the stages of the labor but for now to believe that uh, during the uh, delivery of the placenta let's say god forbid some of the cotyledons are left behind uh, in the uterus only okay so these are the cotyledons basically which might be left behind sometimes right okay now so cotyledons are present these are what these are the i am saying these are the cotyledons right sometimes they are left behind during the delivery of the placenta okay and this is the again this is the fetal side this is the fetal side okay as you can see the placenta is leaving out sorry the umbilical cord is leaving out the placenta centrally okay no problem this is the fetal side this is the maternal side that's how it looks okay done when you are having when you have delivered the placenta you can see that this is the fetal side of the placenta as you can see the umbilical cord is leaving like that okay and this is the maternal side where you can see lot of lot of cotyledons on the maternal side on the maternal side okay very very clear we are having clear picture now about the placenta that it is having a fetal side it is having the maternal side and what could be the complication sometimes during the delivery of the placenta that some of the cotyledons might left behind in the uterus okay and that can cause further bleeding uh, uh, right in that particular female or mother right okay then we need to manage that accordingly that is the different section uh, now i'm going to just talk about uh, abnormal variations of the placenta right every time in every female right unfortunately uh, every time in every female we are not seeing the normal placenta right sometimes we are seeing the abnormal placenta also abnormal variations also so we should know uh, what we can expect okay so we are actually trying to figure out what kind of placenta uh, can be seen if they will be abnormal right so usually we are seeing these kind of pictures they are the normal placenta normal fetal side maternal side and all right so now we, we are just moving into the abnormal variations of the placenta now right okay i'm just hoping that till now everything is clear as far as variations of the placenta as far as normal uh, picture of the placenta is concerned so now i'm talking about the variations of the placenta okay abnormal uh, lobes of the placenta you can say so here what i'm seeing is we are having a placenta yes we are having a placenta very nice but what happened is one lobe of the placenta just separated from the normal placenta right so there are two placenta we can see over here one is the bigger part and another one is a smaller part but they are actually connected with the blood vessels they are just connected with the blood vessels as you can see over here they are just connected with the blood vessels to each other this particular kind of uh, placenta actually it is not normal as you can see i told you i showed you the normal as well this was the normal right this was the normal basically but for, okay and what i am seeing over here is that one part of the placenta got detached from the normal uh, normal part and so we can see the two placenta one with the bigger part one with the smaller one and we can see that they are connected with each other with the blood vessels this particular type of placenta is called as right this particular type of placenta is called as what this particular type of placenta is called as placenta succinturiata okay so first one i'm just writing over here this is called as the succinturiate placenta or placenta succinturiata right placenta succinturiata okay or you can say 
placenta sucks in to react okay fine one thing is clear that this kind of picture can be asked okay so you should very well know that okay now moving on to the next type sometimes what happens is we can see the two lobes of the placenta right this is the bigger part this is the bigger part uh, let me just change the color yeah so this is the bigger big part of the placenta big part of the placenta and this is the smaller part of the placenta yes similar picture we can see but what we can miss over there is that let's say they are not connected with each other with the blood vessels they are not connected with each other this connection this connection is not present let's say this connection is not present then it will be called as the spurious placenta clear very simple if they are connected with the blood vessels two lobes are connected with the blood vessels placenta succentuariata if two lobes are not connected with the blood vessels they are just present like that then it will be called as the spurious placenta okay very very simple or we can call that as placenta spuria right we can call that as okay let me just change the color as well over here as well so placenta spuria right so so that you don't forget it just writing uh, right just writing for a sake of revision only that if two lobes of the placenta are connected right <clears throat> if small lobe of the placenta right small lobe of placenta is connected with the bigger lobe right is connected with the big bigger lobe is actually separated first of all separated from the larger one separated from the larger placenta or the separated from the main placenta let's say right separated from the main placenta and is connected and they are connected to each other connected to each other both the lobes bigger and smaller one with yes blood vessels very simple definition no confusion at all right if somebody will ask you okay how can you differentiate between the spurious and spuria placenta let's say and uh, this accentuate placenta then we will say very simple difference small part of the placenta here separates from the main placenta yes small part of placenta separates from the main placenta separate from main placenta yes but that's not the difference that's the similarity actually but what is the different thing over here but is not connected with the but they are not connected but is not connected right connected with what blood vessel they are not connected with the blood vessels so very very simple picture if i will draw this picture i can draw it very comfortably for an example let's say that you know yeah just uh, taking the red color over here yeah so this was the one part of the placenta small part got detached like this okay umbilical cord was coming out like this right let's say this is the umbilical cord it was coming out like this okay but but what happened is there is no connection in between these two lobes there is no connection over here this is called as the spurious placenta or the spuria placenta i hope there is no doubt in your mind now right now coming to the third category over here then there are the several lobes of the placenta okay bilobed or multi lobed placenta as well so the third category i'm just taking over here that is the third category i'm just talking over here that is the placenta bilobata or bilobed placenta bilobed placenta sometimes uh, however rare, rarely we can see the multi lobed or placenta multi lobata multi lobed placenta or placenta multi lobata okay no problem with that how we can see actually very simple right here we can see the two lobes just writing right here we can see the two lobes here we can see more than two lobes of the placenta obviously right so here we can see the picture okay what i can see over here is that this is one lobe of the placenta this is another lobe of the placenta right this is called as the bilobed placenta here we can see the 
two equal lobes of the placenta which are separated from each other okay and umbilical cord is supplying the blood right this kind of placenta is called as the bilo placenta or it can also be called as the placenta duplex or it can also be called as the it can also be called as a placenta duplex some books wrote it as placenta bipartite bipartite placenta why because it is having partition into two so it is also called as a bipartite placenta okay but main difference is that two lobes two equal lobes are there which are actually separated and umbilical cord is supplying the blood umbilical cord is supplying the blood in both the lobes very simple right if three lobes four lobes are present for example then it will be called as the multi lobata placenta multi lobata or multi lobed placenta right more than two lobes are there for example then it is called as a multi lobed placenta or placenta multi lobata no problem with that okay now coming to the next uh, variation over here this kind of placenta okay so this kind of placenta i am just naming it here this will be the membranous placenta right membranous placenta what happens in the membranous placenta let me just talk about that as well in the membranous placenta what we are seeing is that this placenta is connected or adhering to the uterine wall right very strongly for example uh let me just draw over here okay for example this is the uterus right i will draw it with the next color or the separate color yeah this is the uterus for example right and this is the decidua decidua is called as basically the pregnant uterus is called as the decidua very simple definition so usually usually the uterus should be like this okay the uterus should be like this we just saw that but over here in this condition what will be what we will be seeing actually okay the uterus is uh, the placenta is big actually and uh, it is covering the decidua like this right it is covering the decidua like this and several kind of villi are coming out and they are just embedding into the you know myometrium endometrium like this these are the villi actually these are the villi right when you will expel out this uterus when you will expel out this uterus okay you will be seeing this kind of picture because you can see that some of the uterine cavity has been you know uh, has been seen over here so this is kind of very uh, you know a typical kind of appearance of this particular type of placenta of course this is the umbilical cord which you can see coming outside so very atypical kind of uh, appearance will be seen over here right so this is the placenta this is the kind of a membranous placenta why membranous because membranes of the uterine cavity or the membrane of the decidua major part of the membrane of the decidua is covered over here so this is kind of the membranous placenta so this is a thin placenta usually which is covering the entire uterus or the entire chorionic sac and villi are present throughout the uterus as we can see over here these are the villi which i showed you right these are the villi okay villi are present over there fine so this was what this was the membranous placenta very simple okay once we are clear with that i am coming to the next category that is the uh you know main one and the examiner's favorite as well these are the basically two placenta i will just uh, you know try to uh, make a comparison between them one is the circumvallate placenta okay sixth one i am coming to the sixth one over here so one is the circumvallate placenta circumvallate placenta and another one is the circummarginate placenta very simple to recognize also so circumvallate and circummarginate placenta okay how we can differentiate let me just talk about that as well right so circumvallate placenta what i can see over here is that there is one layer right which layer this one the s yes, there is one layer then you can see there is different layer which one you are talking about this one okay and can you see the partition can you see the partition yes i can see the thick layer which is actually doing the partition between these two okay that's it so what i am talking about over here is i am talking about the circumvallate placenta what do you mean by circumvallate placenta i mean that a thick 
partition is present towards the center right between the between what between the chorions over here okay so what do i mean by that i mean you know usually we are having a extra chorial plate okay we are having basically the chorionic plate so uh, on the simple side i will say that one is the maternal side and one is the fetal side right usually maternal side and the fetal side let's say that this was the maternal side let's say let's say this was the fetal side this was the fetal side and this was the maternal side this was the maternal side of the placenta right usually they are equal usually they are equal what i am saying is you can actually imagine that with this diagram also for example i showed you yeah over here right let me just rub it so that i can explain you what i am talking about i am saying that usually the site of attachment over here let's say this is the maternal side right and this is the fetal side this is the fetal side with the red color i'm showing usually they are sharing the common location equal location right but sometimes what happens is they are not covering the equal equality or i will say they are not covering the equal surface in that condition two kinds of placenta abnormalities can be seen one is the circumvallate and another one is the circummarginate right so in the circumvallate placenta basically we are seeing is uh, let's say that uh, you know the fetal side is called as the basal plate right and mother side is called as the chorionic plate okay now what happens is that forget about the basal and maternal also i am just simply saying that this is the uh, this is the fetal side or it will be called as the basal let's say and this would be the maternal side of the placenta and it will be called as the chorionic let's say if they are sharing the common surface as you can see in this picture then it is the normal type of placenta but if they are not sharing the uh, equal surface then it will be giving you two types one is the circumvallate and another one is the circummarginate right okay in the circumvallate placenta what we are seeing basically is that <coughs> this kind of picture you will be seeing right this kind of picture okay let me show you with this diagram also for example this was the chorionic plate maternal side and let's say this is the fetal side but this is smooth actually this is smooth right this is actually smooth then it is called as the circum marginate placenta okay then it is called as circum marginate rather i should draw it over here right in this kind of picture but if i am saying that if i am saying that yeah if i am saying that this particular right this particular basal side is having the irregularity right then this is the circumvallate placenta right this was again the chorionic one and this was the fetal side this is the basal side right so that kind of difference you can see over here this is the maternal this is the fetal side or you can see the maternal which will, will be the chorionic fetal will be the basal so this kind of difference if you are seeing that partition is coming towards center side then to differentiate purpose for the differentiate purpose or for the uh, you know recognizing purpose of this kind of placenta if in the exam they are asking you then if you are seeing that the partition is coming towards centrally this is called as the circum valid placenta if this partition is present marginally if this partition is present marginally this will be called as the circum marginate placenta because that is that partition you can, you are seeing that marginally so this will be the circum marginate placenta right so that is the thing basically <clears throat> okay so that is the basic difference between the circum marginate placenta and the circum valid placenta in the circum valid placenta you can see the partition coming towards central central side in the circum marginate placenta partition is coming towards the margins right second is that uh, in the circum marginate placenta what we can see is 
uh, this thing over here okay the bezel side and the maternal side they will be having the smooth surface but in the circumvallate the smooth surface is not there okay this surface will not be smooth basically this surface will not be smooth basically right in the circummarginate that surface will be smooth that is the difference between the circumvallate and the circummarginate right now some more variations for example uh, the insertion of the umbilical cord variations so one is the battle door placenta what is the battle door placenta over here umbilical cord is inserted usually it should be inserted centrally i told you right but if it is inserted marginally if it is inserted marginally right as you can see the placenta is present right placenta is present like this but at the end marginally the umbilical cord is coming out umbilical cord is coming out right this is called as the battle door placenta in the filamentous placenta what is happening umbilical cord was coming like that nicely but then it got partition then it got partition like this right it got partition and then it is inserting into the placenta and then it is inserting into the placenta this is called as the filamentous placenta right so umbilical cord what they are saying umbilical cord inserted into the membrane at a varying distance so this varying distance they are talking about yeah that's they are talking about almost like 5 cm for example so that varying distance is present over there this is the filamentous placenta next one is the syphilitic placenta in the syphilis we can see that so abnormally large placenta right pale and yellow gray placenta as you can see over here in this picture right adimatous placenta right thick kind of uh, fluid can be uh, there as a content in this particular kind of placenta this is the adimatous placenta right because adema is there right fluid filled cavity is there fluid filled placenta is there okay that is the thing then placenta membrane membrane yes a membranous placenta i told you already thin placenta is there okay and usually it is large placenta covering whole uterus covering whole uterus usually and villi are also present i told you earlier as well right then placenta previa i will talk about this placenta previa the you know in the detail in some other video but for now what is happening is placenta is implanted partially or completely over the lower uterine segment adjacent to the internal loss actually what happens usually is that uh, you know the placenta if it is coming towards the internal loss or if it is coming towards the lower uterine segment for example if this is the uterus okay obviously uh, this will be the decidua decidua i told you pregnant uterus usually the placenta should be present over here right right normally normally the placenta should be present over here but let's say in some particular uh, unfortunate females what happened is that it is present near the lower uterine segment right or maybe covering the internal loss also then it will be the category of placenta previa right i will talk about that in in some other video in the detail okay where i will be talking about the uh, you know placenta previa in detail right so placenta is implanted partially or completely over the lower uterine segment that is the placenta previa basically we'll talk about that in the separate video okay so i hope uh, i was able to convey my message about the variations of the abnormal placenta okay and some bit about normal placenta so that's it about the today's section i hope you enjoyed the session and i will see you in the next one until next time